Okay, I'm going to try to shoot this pretty quickly uh, because um, I have been thwarted at every opportunity trying to shoot this on location video. Uh, I tried to go downtown, uh, shoot in um, Stanley Park and the roads are still closed because of COVID. Uh, parking lots are still closed here at this park. Um, so trying to get anywhere near this location has been a little difficult and had lots of passerbys. But anyway, uh, hopefully we'll get a couple of minutes wet uh, with some clean, uh, some clean, not too much noise in the background. There's construction going on back behind here as well. So anyway, um, what I want to do is I want to shoot this video on location um, to talk about focus stacking basically. So, so what this is really about uh, is to, to get an idea or to, to create a photo uh, in a scenario in which um, you want to have the, the cleanest image possible with unbelievable depth of field. So wide depth of field, deep depth of field, whatever you want to call it. So everything within the image is in focus, um, extremely sharp from uh, close to the distance close to the camera all the way out. So there's been other videos that have been done uh, that have talked about this. Um, the DA50 that I'm shooting on back here in the background. And now we've got an airplane, of course. <laughs> The 850 that I'm uh, shooting on uh, does focus stacking. Um, it's called focus shift in camera, but uh, it does do the, the focus stacking in camera, but it doesn't actually stack the images. So you've got to actually do that in the software. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of try to demonstrate this particular scene. This is not an ideal scene by any stretch of the imagination. Um, unfortunately, trying to get an ideal scene, it's like I said, it's proven to be a little bit difficult. Um, but um, we'll go from there. Uh, and I'm going to show kind of the scene that we're shooting back this direction and I'll kind of talk about the, the settings in camera uh, to get the, uh, the focus stacking um, going in the DA50. This so, is our scene for this afternoon. And if you hear a loud splash, you'll know that I fell off of this rock. <laughs> um, I'm having to hop uh, between different rocks in order to get this shot. So I just wanted to kind of lay out the scene and see where, you know, I've got my, my camera set up on, on top of this rock. Uh, there are rocks in the foreground that I want to get in focus. There are lily pads kind of in the mid-ground uh, and uh, off in the distance as well. And then we've got the buildings way back in the, in the back there. So uh, the idea or the hope is to get everything in focus from foreground, right close to the camera with those rocks, all the way back to the buildings in the background. You'll see that I've got the focused shift shooting set to off at this point, but it's highlighted. Uh, so it's ready to go to basically key in your... Okay, now you'll see that the start menu item is selected. Uh, you'll see that the number of shots selected is 10. It's just an estimate. That doesn't necessarily mean that it will take that many shots. Uh, the camera will make the determination as to the number of shots. Okay, and you'll also see that I've got the focus step width set to two. Range goes for anywhere from one to 10. One being your narrowest range, meaning that as it starts to take the individual images, it will start closest to the camera. And as it goes out, it'll, it'll have the, the narrowest range possible. Um, interval between shots I've set to two seconds. And I've also got silent photography set to on. Now, one of the reasons why you want to have silent photography set to on is you won't, you don't want your mirror flipping back and forth uh, in between images as it's taking those. So uh, it just keeps that um, kind of that that rattle, if you will, from the mirror flipping up and down out of the, of the picture. Take each individual image without having to worry about that uh, impacting the clarity of the image. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and kick this thing off. It's just a simple button push. And you'll see it's preparing. And now it's taking the individual images. I am not particularly happy with the final images. In fact, I think I've probably shot about a thousand images I like better than these, but uh, I just decided to pick the haziest and uh, most overcast day uh, that we've had in probably a week or more here in Vancouver. So um, if you could bear with me and maybe just uh, focus more on the, the process and uh, um, you know, what it's supposed to look like as opposed to what it ended up turning out to be then uh, maybe we'll be go okay and then I will reserve the right to uh, actually um, ex make another video that uh, that really kind of shows the the functionality of focus stacking um, a little bit better and, as well as hopefully pick a, a little bit better lighting conditions so anyway I'm going to go ahead and open up a uh, Lightroom um, you'll see here uh, a selection of four images 
these are the, the, the four images that were produced by the, uh, the camera when I selected focus shift shooting. Um, now, if you remember in the earlier part of the video, I mentioned that uh, uh, I selected 10 possible images that it could shoot, but the camera actually makes the determination based on your, your interval uh, as to uh, how many images it's going to produce. So uh, I allowed for 10 and the camera produced four. So uh, here you'll, you'll notice um, uh, my initial focus point, um, if you can see it, is probably right in through here. And so the camera would have, uh, in the next couple of images, kind of gone from this focal point here straight out uh, and farther out into um, the image itself, or farther out into the background, if you will. So from foreground to background, it would have started kind of in front of these rocks. So I think, uh, in part, that's a little bit of a limitation of the D850, uh, at least my understanding, uh, because there's only 55 focal points that I have access to. Um, it kind of creates a bit of a limitation as to you know your ability to select a say a focal point right here in front uh, at the lower point of the rocks so which is fine um, it, you know for most landscape images I'm not sure that you would really notice it but um, for this particular image you kind of notice that the little the rocks are a little bit out of focus even though my focal point probably would have been like I said right in front of the rocks here in the water so um, which was kind of the lowest point that I could start with closer to the camera in the foreground so. So you'll see the four images. Um, so when you're in Lightroom, uh, the, the process is to basically uh, select the four images. So I'll go ahead and do that here. And I will um, go up to our right click to go to stacking. And I'm going to go to auto stack by capture time. So uh, if, if you also remember earlier in the video, I mentioned that uh, I um, created a, a little bit of a, a a split in the capture time about a two second uh, interval if you will so each image was captured two seconds after the other so that allows you to kind of auto stack this based on the capture time now if you didn't do that if you only allowed for a zero second duration or whatever then you could just simply group into a stack and I'm sure that would be perfectly fine as well but I'm just gonna say auto stack by capture time basically so uh, which would be a, a two second difference for each one of these images so and here you see the time between stacks, and I, I have a two-second interval selected. All right, so you see down here at the bottom left on in uh, Lightroom that it has basically uh, merged all those images, kind of similar to an, an HDR type of, of, of effect. But in this scenario, obviously, uh, the difference being that your focal point moves in the image as opposed to any uh, settings changing per image. So if you're going to normally do an HDR type of image, you're going to change basically, let's say your shutter speed or your aperture uh, to adjust. Normally it's going to be your shutter speed um, to adjust for um, different lighting conditions to kind of bracket, if you will. Um, so you could um, basically expose for the sky a little bit better and then expose for the foreground a little bit better. But in this scenario, basically what we're assuming is that instead of doing that, what we're trying to do is enhance the depth of field by um, changing our focal point. And as I mentioned earlier, the D850 will allow you to do that in camera. But basically what it does is it simply shifts the focus point as it produces each image. And then you come in in the software in Lightroom, uh, as we have done here, and you simply stack those images together. Um, and it produces a single image as what you're seeing here. So as I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> not particularly happy with the sky. Um, and... I did put a little dehaze in here, I put a couple of filters, um, not filters, but more, more of a graduated filter I dropped onto this uh, final image, if you will, to kind of help improve the sky especially, but it's just gray, it's gross, it's hazy, you can see in the foreground, even with dehaze uh, dropped on that in the graduated filter, it's, it's just, it's not, it's not producing an image that I'm particularly happy with. Um, so. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up Photoshop. Um, you'll see here, I'm just going to edit in Photoshop. Uh, and this is the stacked image that I'm going to edit. And I'm going to go ahead and replace this guy, which I know uh, there may be many of you out there who are, are not big fans of that. And I've kind of alluded to that in one of my earlier videos. But um, if you'll just bear with me, um, I think changing the sky at least creates an image that I'm a little bit happier with 
Uh, but um, I'm going to go up under filter and I'm going to go to, to Luminar 4. And this is on a, um, it's not a video about Luminar 4, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time in Luminar 4. I'm just going to go and show you kind of the effect of replacing the sky uh, on the final image of this stacked image. And uh, that at least maybe uh, to some effect it kind of saves the image a little bit, but um, again, so I'm going to go up under AI Enhance, um, excuse me, I'm going to go to uh, Creative and I am going to go to AI Sky Replacement instead under Creative. And I am going to select, um, let's see, I think I personally, and I'll select a few of these just so people can see what options are available. These are just the default options that are kind of dropped into the software in Luminar 4. And this one I kind of liked quite a bit. So I was back and forth between this one, Blue Sky 1, and um, Bright and Blue Sky 3. So um, yeah, I'm not sure which one I like better. Um, I guess there's probably, it's just personal preference, obviously. Um, yeah, maybe Blue Sky one. So I'm going to go with that image. Um, and there you can kind of see what it would look like when you have replaced the sky. And the cool thing about Luminar 4 uh, is that it also does a fantastic job of replacing kind of your foreground to pick up that reflection in the water. So um, that artificial intelligence is unbelievable. Um, would be awful awful difficult or not I wouldn't say awful difficult but it would take quite a bit of time I think uh, in Photoshop to produce kind of a similar image so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and apply that um, here in Luminar 4 and say we're good to go and give it here in a second you'll see that it's adding the filter and there we go um, so that's kind of our, our final image um, I think it's kind of hard to see in this particular um, I don't know this environment how well that adjustment in the focal point um, really impacted the depth of field. Some of you may be able to see it probably better than others, um, but I think if I have the opportunity tomorrow, I might um, go back and try to find a little bit better environment um, to create this image. But if not, um, like I said, I may just create a part two and um, maybe show it uh, in a scenario where you've got flowers on the ground, which I tried to do today, but unfortunately because of uh, all the COVID-19 restrictions um, throughout the, the city of Vancouver and Burnaby here. This is actually Deer, um, Deer Lake Park in Burnaby, uh, BC, British Columbia, for those of you who are familiar with that area. And I think that um, probably covers today's video. Uh, again, apologies for those who are hoping to see uh, this incredible, um, incredibly beautiful image produced. I just picked the, the worst day <laughs> to do this. So... Um, if you will forgive me, uh, I will appreciate that. And for those of you who like the video, please like and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Um, I noticed that I've had a couple of additional subscribers recently. It's fantastic. Um, so thanks for stopping by. Thanks for taking a look. And um, I hope you enjoy the video.